Hey guys, Mr. P. In this video, we're going to focus on the Krebs cycle, which is the second phase of aerobic cellular respiration. In a past video, we talked about glycolysis and the prep step, which occurs here, which is the link reaction between glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. As a review, glucose is converted into two pyruvates, pyruvate number one and pyruvate number two, both pyruvates are produced in the cytoplasm. Once the pyruvates are made, they are both going to head into their respective prep step, where each pyruvate is converted into a acetyl-CoA. That acetyl-CoA will enter the matrix of the mitochondria where the TCA or the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle is taking place. And so once the Krebs cycle is initiated, we then go through these intermediate metabolic steps. And so the first thing that will happen within the Krebs cycle is oxaloacetic acid or oxaloacetate, which is a four carbon compound, is waiting for the acetyl-CoA, which was just produced by the prep step, will enter the same area where this oxaloacetic acid is, which is the matrix of the mitochondria, and they will join Oxaloacetic acid plus the two carbon acetyl will form a six carbon citric acid. Now it is important to note that the coenzyme A, which is the usher, which joins the acetyl, which is the two carbon compound, just long enough to usher it into the Krebs cycle before it leaves, the coenzyme A will leave the Krebs cycle, head back to the link reaction of the prep step where it will grab another acetyl to usher it into the next Krebs cycle, which again occurs in this matrix. So oxaloacetic acid, the four carbon compound, will join the two carbon acetyl to form a six carbon citric acid. Once we form the six carbon citric acid, which again is why this Krebs cycle is also called the citric acid cycle, the citric acid will then be oxidized by our NAD+. NAD+, will come in, it will convert into NADH by taking the two electrons and hydrogen ion from citric acid. And once it grabs the electrons and hydrogen ions, it'll be converted into NADH. Once NADH is made, it will head to the ETC, like all other NADH that is made throughout the aerobic cellular respiration process, starting with glycolysis through prep step and the Krebs cycle, will enter this electron transport chain, which ultimately will make a lot of energy. Through the process of oxidizing the citric acid, we will also produce a CO2. Carbon dioxide contains one carbon, which comes from the six carbon citric acid. And so through the process of oxidative decarboxylation, which again is the removal of a carbon by oxidizing our molecule, we end with a five carbon compound, which is called alpha ketoglutaric acid. Started with six citric acid, oxidized it and decarboxylized it to produce a five carbon compound called alpha ketoglutaric acid. Once that alpha ketoglutaric acid is produced, we then oxidatively decarboxylize it again. And so we come in with our oxidizer, which is NAD+. It will grab a pair of electrons and a hydrogen ion. It'll be converted into NADH. And then again, we'll cut a carbon off of the AKA, which again is another round of that oxidative decarboxylation. Once we have the oxidative decarboxylation process completed, we then have a four carbon compound called succinyl-CoA. Started with six, cut a carbon off, we're at five, cut a carbon off, we're at four. And if you notice, we started with a four carbon, we are now at a four carbon, so no more oxidative decarboxylation. There is still some electrons and hydrogen ions that we can squeeze out of these intermediates, but we will not cut or remove any more carbon from this compound. Once we have our succinyl-CoA, we then can squeeze a little bit of energy out in the form of ADP, turning into, in the form of ATP. And so ADP comes in, again, adenosine diphosphate. It will squeeze a bit of energy out of this succinyl-CoA. It'll produce ATP. Basically, a phosphate will be added to our ADP, turning it into ATP. That will change succinyl-CoA into succinic acid. Once the succinic acid is produced, we then can squeeze more electrons and hydrogen ions out, and so we come in with FAD. FAD is going to grab a pair of electrons and two hydrogen ions. 
that will turn FAD into FADH2. Again, two hydrogen ions, converting it to FADH2. That turns our succinic acid into malic acid, and if you look at the cycle, we have one more step turning malic acid into our starting oxaloacetic acid, which requires us to oxidize it with our oxidizer, which is NAD+. NAD plus is going to grab a pair of electrons and a hydrogen ion, turning NAD plus into NADH, turning malic acid into oxaloacetic acid. Now, we started talking about where these NADH and FADH2s are going. NADH, every time it is produced, will head to the ETC. FADH2 will head to the ETC, and again, NADH is going to head to the ETC. That is the chemiosmotic pathway. It is important to note that the Krebs cycle happens twice per glucose, and that's a result of there being two acetyl-CoAs that are produced per glucose during the prep step. So if we zoom out and look at the processes more holistically, again, glycolysis takes a glucose and produces two pyruvates. Those pyruvates, which again, times two, enter the prep step or the link reaction again times two leading to the Krebs cycle which again happens twice again per glucose the Krebs cycle is producing NADH and FADH2 and if we think about holistic numbers per glucose the Krebs cycle will produce a total of three NADHs per turn happens twice, so six total NADHs are made per glucose. One FADH2 is made per turn for a total of two FADH2s per glucose, and one ATP molecule is made per turn for a total of two ATPs made per glucose. There is NADH that is made during glycolysis, and there is NADH made during the link reaction, all of the NADH and FADH2 that is made during glycolysis, link reaction, and the Krebs cycle is all going to head to the Criste membrane, which is where the electron transport chain is located, which is where chemiosmotic phosphorylation or oxidative phosphorylation occurs, which pumps out a whole bunch of ATP. The next video will be all about the chemiosmotic pathway leading to the abundance of ATP production, but for now this video was targeted specifically for the Krebs cycle. If you learned something, give it a thumbs up, leave any questions in the comments, subscribe to the channel, see ya!